Hey folks, it's the Mr. Of Flyer here, and welcome to my in-depth review of the 2021 Suzuki Hayabusa. Now it's all very well taking one of these bikes for a test ride and getting a feel for what it's like, but what's the bike actually like to live with? Well stick around and stay tuned and I'll tell you. So this video then is going to be my in-depth review of this awesome motorcycle. This bike has got a lot of legend about it. Well, is it warranted? Well, I've been riding this bike now for a couple of weeks, got to know the bike as well as I can. I've ridden it in all sorts of conditions on all sorts of roads. And in this video, I'm going to bring you all the lessons I've learned, not just the good things, but the bad things too. So uh, stick around and stay tuned. If you're interested in the 2021 Suzuki Hayabusa, this video is for you. So how about going on tour? On the Hayabusa then, would that be an option? Well, yes, of course it would. You can go on tour on any bike. I suppose the things to consider are, what's it like riding to your destination? Then are you gonna have fun when you get there? Well, in the case of the Hayabusa, it scores both, or scores well on both accounts. And that if you're gonna ride, say, down to France or Spain or something, and you've got to do some big miles, then on a motorway, this bike would be absolutely fantastic for that. Loads of power, good protection from the wind and so on. So you can knock the miles off and then when you get to where you're going to somewhere picturesque and lovely like this then you can have a bit of fun maybe not on these loose chippings i won't oh loose chippings all up the lovely new fairing sorry suzuki but yeah if you were going to the alps or wherever then you could certainly have a lot of fun on the high booster so definitely you could uh, it's good for touring in that sense i guess the bit where it's not so good for touring is on the baggage front in that uh, obviously it's not good for fitting panniers and top boxes, things like that. So you're talking maybe some soft luggage slung over the back seat if you took the seat cowl off and or a rucksack and a tank bag. So it could be done if it's just you, but obviously you're not going to go too up touring on the high booster. But overall, I think touring this bike would be absolutely fine for that. So what's the high booster like in town then? In the urban environment what's she like riding at slow speeds well pretty good actually i have to say i thought she was going to be quite jerky being a big old engine but here i am look just ticking over 20 miles an hour second gear smooth as you like the fueling on here is very very nice it's not a particularly day as i roll through amersham here it's not particularly busy so not great to uh, check for things like the filtering and so on but uh, not the ideal bike for weaving through traffic because it is quite long quite big so I can think of better bikes for filtering, but you could do it on here. There's certainly slow speed riding, definitely not an issue on the Hayabusa. So uh, another thumbs up for riding in the urban environment on the big Suzuki. So it's a little damp under tyre today out on the Hayabusa. How does the uh, bike fare in the wet? Well. I call modern bikes that's laden with electronics. The electronics are there to help you. So I'll switch this down into a softer riding mode. I'll put it into mode C. It's got three modes on here, A, B and C. Aggressive, basic and comfort, I think is what it stands for. So no real rain mode, but in mode C, it turns the traction control up to 10. <laughs> so that'll do me. So that's its uh, kind of most intrusive mode, if you like. So you're not gonna spin the wheel up in the wet. So the electronics are all there to help you. Tire-wise, the bike is shod by Bridgestone Battleaxe Hypersport S22s, I think they're called. And I think I'm right in saying that they were tyres specifically developed by Bridgestone for this bike. And they've got a uh, special compound, special new compound that's supposed to make them good both in wet and dry circumstances. Now, I'm not going to be obviously thrashing the bike through here when it's damp and a bit of drizzle in the air. But, uh, you know, I'm going over these white lines and stuff. No moments, they feel pretty confidence inspiring. I've only been out on the bike in the damp for, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. And I haven't had any of those moments where I thought, oh, these tyres feel a bit iffy. So even though it's relatively cold out today, and the tyres are still relatively cold, no issues with the tyres in the wet. <coughs> At least I haven't found any. And then the other good thing about uh, the Hayabusa, if you are going to ride it in the wet, and let's face it, not many of these are going to be ridden in wet conditions, I would suspect. But if you do, you've got this massive frontal area and this big fairing, so uh, you're pretty well protected from the worst of the weather. And if you're actually in driving rain, 
I mean, it's pretty much stopped at the moment. It's just drizzle, as I say, but it's wet on the roads. But if you were in driving rain, I think it would uh, you'd pretty much be protected by the fairing and the screen on this. So surprisingly, perhaps for a bike of this sort, riding in the wet is actually a bit of a thumbs up. I've been on much worse bikes in terms of riding in the wet. Okay, let's get on some uh, practical matters about ownership of the Hayabusa then, show. What's it going to be like if you actually live this bike? What are the uh, little niggles that make uh, all the difference between ownership being a joyous experience or a bit of a pain? So there are a number of things that people often ask me to cover on these videos, starting with, what's it like to pump the tyres? Uh, can you access the valves okay? Well, on this one, uh, actually, it doesn't have those right angle valves. Look at the front wheel here. Look, you see the valve is right in there. Uh, it's not right angle, and you've got the brake discs here as well. It's uh, actually quite difficult to get your uh, pump in there or your tyre pressure gauge. Very difficult, in fact. So uh, that's number one. Uh, you might want to fit some of those aftermarket right angle valve stems on there. Next up, what about lubing the chain? Well, on this bike, actually, pretty difficult. Of course, it being sort of a sports bike means it doesn't have a centre stand. You wouldn't expect that. So you're going to have to uh, put the bike up on paddock stands or wheel the bike around to actually access the chain. And then talking of accessing the chain, it's actually quite difficult on this bike because it's got uh, a bit of a chain cover on it and there's not actually much of the chain exposed. So, uh, yeah, lubricating the chain on there is going to be a bit of an effort. I mean, it's doable, but a bit of a pain. Okay, next up, something close to my heart. Cleaning the bike. Is the uh, Hayabusa a pain or easy to clean? Well, I put this into the easy category because uh, this bike has got an awful lot of fairing and a lot, an awful lot of it is actually enclosed. So you can't see much of the engine, for example. There's not a lot of the frame exposed. It's actually pretty easy uh, to give a once over to make it look good, as I've done for this video, for example. Uh, if you want to give it a deep clean, then you're going to have to take the fairings off. So that's a bit more tricky. But in the main, I'd say this is one of the easier bikes to keep clean. Okay, next practical matter, what about checking the oil? Is it a dipstick or does it have a sight glass? Well, I'm pleased to say Hayabusa has a sight glass. So uh, nice and easy to check at a glance. You might need a helper because you have to get the bike upright, obviously, to actually check it. But uh, no faffing about with a dipstick on the Hayabusa. You've got a sight glass to check the oil. All right, next on our list of matters practical, something else that people often ask me is, can I demonstrate the horn on a bike? So here we go. Ooh, bog standard on here. It's a little bit wimpy, actually. I think a deeper horn would be nicer on, uh, on such a big bike, but it's perfectly loud enough, just the same as any other motorcycle horn, really. So next practical matter, seating position on the Busa. Now I've already talked about how comfortable the bike is in my first ride review. If you've not seen that, go and check out the link in the corner and uh, I talk there about what it's like from a comfort point of view. But often people say, well, what's the bike actually like uh, in terms of your position on the bike? What does it look like when you're on the bike? Well, here's a little bit of uh, a shot of me sat on the bike. As you can see, my leg is a little bit at an acute angle. It's more of a sports bike uh, thing than anything, but I can get my feet flat on the deck as well. I'm five foot eight with a 32 inch leg. I can get my feet on the deck, no problems at all. So uh, seating position on this, it is sporty, but it is comfortable. Another thing I often get asked is what's under the seat of a particular bike? Well, in the case of the Busa, the seat itself, you have to undo some bolts to get the seat off. So I'm not going to take that off, but their rear hump does come off. You just uh, use the key to do that. So let me just show you what's under here. Pop that there. There we go, we've got a little bit of space. The uh, manual is there, but you've got enough room there for a uh, Chopsy to put one of his Macadies. So uh, a little tiny bit of storage underneath the hump at the back if you've gone for the hump. Uh, otherwise, you'd have the rear seat here. But uh, yeah, you've got uh, enough to put your sandwiches, basically, and that's about it. Little toolkit in there as well, by the way. How about fuel economy on the bike? Well, I'd be lying if I said I'd actually worked it out by uh, actually measuring what I put in the tank and what I've used. But during the period I've had the uh, bike, I've rode it on all sorts of roads and in all sorts of conditions, as you've seen. And according to the trip on it, I've been averaging 37.6 miles per gallon. So uh, fairly thirsty, as you'd imagine, but I don't think 37.6 is too bad for that type of bike. OEM tyres is another question that comes up. What is the bike fitted with? Well, this has got Bridgestone Battleax S22 Hypersport tyres, which I think were developed specifically for the Hayabusa. Okay, the mighty Hayabusa at night then, and I know those uh, observant amongst you will have noticed it's not night time. I just want to show you the lights on this before we actually ride it at night and show you what they're like during the day. Uh, so if I turn the bike on, the lights that you get kind of by default, look, here we go, hopefully you can see it on the camera. The main middle light, which is uh, properly on and nice and bright, and you've got these two running lights at the side as well, so uh, that's all well and good. If you want to put it onto full beam, this is the uh, the button for that. You just push it fully forward, which I like. Brings us onto full beam here, which is this little light on the bottom here as well. Hopefully you can see that. And then if you want to, you can flash as well just by pressing the button back. So that's how that works during the day. Let's use the magic of YouTube and now see what the bike is like at night. Okay, so here we are. Night time has fallen. Let's check out what these lights are like then. Well, I have to say, they're very good. Now, as ever, I always make this disclaimer, the GoPro doesn't show up the lights at all. You might only just be looking at a dark screen for all I know. 
but actually these lights are excellent they're on dip at the moment of course and they've got a pretty good spread I don't know if it's because of those side lights I showed you actually makes the light spread quite wide but uh, yeah nice nice throw of light let's go to the uh, full beam there we go and that's made a massive difference to what I'm looking at wider and longer let's go back down to dip and back up to full yeah that is amazing they are of course LED lights throwing out that clean sort of light that you get from them yeah excellent lights those some of the best I've used and then in terms of the uh, display at night hopefully you can see here nothing different about the display but it's not too dazzling it's lit in this nice white design and it looks really clear I love what they've done putting the little um, I don't know what you call them but the little white bits of plastic by each number I think it looks great everything's nice and clear doesn't dazzle you really nice job let's just see what it's like on dip through this dark lane yeah looking good so yeah riding at night if you've got to do it the Hayabusa is absolutely fine switch gear is not lit up not many bikes do that and I suppose it could do with that on this because it's quite complicated but other than that no problems riding at night on the Hayabusa So on the dual carriageway, the Hayabusa can be absolutely ballistic, as you can imagine. Riding this bike on faster roads is an absolute privilege or pleasure. You've got such good wind protection over here. The airflow is going right over my helmet. This is where the aerodynamics of the bike come in. I've got no wind buffet whatsoever. I'm in top gear, I'm in mode B. And I'm doing uh, just a snifter over 70 miles an hour and the bike is just so relaxed it's got so much more to give if you're on an auto barn you can absolutely rip it along so no surprise at all on faster roads the high abuser is just a joy all right let's come into my favorite local train station here at Great Missenden <laughs> the only local train station at Great Missenden and do what is now becoming my infamous lugging about test this is where I uh, try to move the bike around in the car park in an attempt to simulate what it'd be like if you're moving the bike around on your driveway and also it gives me a chance to see what the turning circle is like as well so let's stick it slap bang in the middle of one of these standard parking spaces and see what she's like to turn around so let's find neutral very easy to find neutral on here stand is nice and easy to find as well goes over quite a long way on the stand the Hayabusa but never to a point where I felt worried about it going over anyway uh, gonna move it around here then as usual no grab handles or anything like that so you've got to hold it by the cowl or rear seat if you've got the rear seat option in fact let me just hold it by that seat it is quite heavy to get off the stand feels quite a light well it is a large bike for sure right let's wheel her out here I have to say it does feel quite ponderous I'm gonna go full lock Oh, I'm leaving the stand down because I don't want to take any chances with dropping this beast and the turning circle he says as he scrapes the stand sorry 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 Suzuki sorry is quite wide actually look at that that's two whole spaces so let's just leave it there stay there there we go so that was uh, I think it was the middle of that one actually all the way around to there on full lock so quite a long or wide turning circle and I have to say I'm just a sort of a medium to small size fella I find it quite hard to move around in fact because it's starting to go uphill there I kind of run out of puff going there so I think uh, if you're a bigger bloke it's going to be fine to live with this but if you're a smaller person or, a, or dare I say a female um, actually it's quite hard to uh, quite hard to shift around I think so just bear that in mind if you're a smaller person quite difficult to lug about <laughs> Okay, so at the start of the video, I said that I'd bring you all the lessons I'd learnt on the bike. Not only the good things, but the bad things too. And I've written down a list of the negatives and positives that I've spotted during the time that I've had the bike. So uh, let's crack on with that then. So the first thing I've got on the list here are the looks aren't for me. Now, it's obviously it's a very subjective thing, but for me, this bike just looks too bloated. It reminds me, I don't know, of a Victorian pram or a, or a shell or something. It just, just doesn't work for me. So looks are the number one thing. Now, that might be, that is subjective, and it may seem a little bit shallow, but to me, uh, how a bike looks and whether it you know has that factor of you having that look back at it in the garage that's a big thing of owning a bike so a uh, bit of a major negative for me is that one next up I've written here weight when moving around now the bike is pretty heavy it has to be said now when you're moving on it it handles beautifully and you don't notice the weight that's the case with pretty much all big bikes in my experience but when you're actually moving this around on the driveway it is a big old lump so if you're a smaller person you might want to consider that 
Another thing I noticed was the clutch action on here. Just found it a little bit, um, you have to let it out a long way before you get to the biting point. It's just a little high, the clutch action for me. I'm sure you could probably adjust that out, but as this bite has come to me, I've just found the clutch action a little high. Clutching at straws here now. See what I did there? Uh, another one that might seem a little bit odd, I've written here, maybe uh, too many electronics. This is absolutely laden with electronics. I'm not convinced you need 10 levels of traction control. I know if you're a track god and you love that sort of thing, then all that stuff will really matter to you. But for me as a normal road rider, I don't need as many electronics as this bike's got. It does make it a little bit um, complicated to ride. You can be a bit distracted by it. You may not see that as a negative, but for me, I think simpler is usually better. And last but not least on my negative uh, list are the exhausts on this. They look absolutely hideous. I posted some pictures of this bike during the time I've had it on my Instagram account. If you're not following me there, do go and follow me. Um, and uh, I think the biggest number of comments that I had back was the looks of the exhaust on this. They seem to not be liked. They are, of course, Euro 5 friendly. Somebody said, um, what on earth is Euro 10 going to do to bikes? So I completely agree. The exhausts on this thing are absolutely hideous. All right, that's it for the negatives. Let's move on to the positives. Right, should we try and be a bit more positive then? I've, uh, he says, sat in front of that hideous exhaust. Okay, so again, written down uh, the positive things that I found out about the bike here. So first off, I want to just mention the paintwork on this. Now, this isn't my favourite colour. I really wish that Suzuki had sent me the black and gold bike, which I think looks absolutely epic. Not so keen on this grey paintwork, but the thing about it is, it is very nice quality. It's just got a depth and finish to it that you don't see uh, on many bikes these days. It's got like a metal flake in it, and it just looks brilliant. So, uh, yeah, the uh, paintwork depth is really good on the bike. Uh, next up, I've written here as a positive, folklore surrounding the Hayabusa. It's one of those iconic bikes. People that don't even know about motorcycles have heard of Hayabusas, and there aren't that many bikes uh, that, uh, that that is the case for. Maybe things like the Honda Goldwing, which I would mention. Uh, I can't think of that many others that people, maybe the Fireblade, uh, but yeah, certainly on the fingers of one hand, you could mention all the uh, iconic bikes. Maybe the Bonneville as well. Anyway, I'm thinking more and more as I think about it. But anyway, Hayabusa is definitely there up there with folklore, so uh, I think that's a good thing. Uh, next up, uh, in terms of riding, the quick shifter on this bike is beautiful. Um, it, you can actually adjust it. It's got two levels of, adjust of adjustment, which is uh, really good. I've not come across that before. And I think that adjusts the timing uh, what, uh, that it takes for the gear sh shift to actually um, change. And the quick shifter on here, both up and down, is really, really lovely. So uh, that's the next thing. Uh, next up, effortless power and predictable delivery. Great fueling at all speeds is what I've written here. Uh, because it's got this big engine, because it's got loads of torque, because it's um, lovely and smooth as a four-cylinder, it's just power available everywhere here. I just love that about the bike. Handling, it's got a really planted feel this bike. Again, it might be because of its weight. And again, uh, lots of big heavy bikes do feel like this, but uh, in the corners, it's just, you sort of set and forget. It feels uh, solid in the corners. It doesn't feel jitterish uh, like a light skittish bike might do. Uh, you set it and round you go. It's just a planted feel on this bike. And I love that about big bikes. It's just the way that they feel. And the handling on this is much more nimble than you'd expect of a heavy bike. But uh, yeah, so the handling is lovely on it. Next up, I've written here, price. 16 and a half grand one of these will cost you. Now, that is a lot of money, but when you consider uh, what you get on the bike for that, I think that's pretty good value, actually. Uh, I mentioned already the electronics. I'm not keen on having quite so many of them, but actually, uh, a bike with that much electronics for 16 and a half grand is pretty good value, I reckon. Uh, next up, instrumentation. I think they've played a blinder the, the way they've um, done the, for want of a better word, dashboard on the Hayabusa. I love the mix of uh, classic analog dials and the TFT screen in the middle, giving you all the extra information that you need. I think that's beautiful. I hope other manufacturers take note and follow suit. And then uh, last, but by no means least on the positive list, I've just said here, smooth engine. Again, four cylinder creaminess, uh, no vibrations on the bike. If you like uh, a smooth ride, then the Hayabusa delivers that in space. So there we are, that's my in-depth review of the 2021 Suzuki Hayabusa. What an incredible machine this is. It's a bike that's got uh, a massively loyal following and I dare say that that following are going to absolutely love this bike because it's got uh, everything about the bike that I've heard about the original Hayabusa is still here. It's got that massive power, massive acceleration, incredible stability and aerodynamics. For me, the looks just don't quite do it, but uh, if you can get past that, then it really is a beautiful bike with its electronic suite now. It's up there with the best of them and fantastic value for money, I think, at 16 and a half grand. For me, though, the standout feature, I think, is just going to be not only that engine, the way it sounds and its smoothness, but also the handling of the bike. On roads like these, sweepy B roads, it's just an absolute joy to ride. So if you're interested in these bikes, do go and get yourself a test ride. I think you might be quite impressed. All right, hope you enjoyed that. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mist and Flyer. Cheerio.